Welcome to section three of this course, building your own NLP application using Python NLTK, movie review sentiment analysis. In this section, we're going to expand on the basics that we've covered in the previous lessons, and we'll apply our knowledge to build our very first fully functional NLP application. That's right, we're going to build a movie review sentiment classifier that takes in movie review corpora as an input and classifies each review as either positive or negative. This type of classifier is extremely valuable for gaining business insights and is commonly used to understand the sentiment of users for things like Twitter, Amazon, and Facebook. We'll start off by introducing recurrent neural networks in the long short-term memory architecture. Then we'll walk through how to create a sentiment classifier using an RNN with LSTM via Python. And finally, we'll apply our sentiment classifier to a sample movie review dataset collected from the popular IMDb website. So let's get started with our first topic, an introduction to recurrent neural networks in long short-term memory. We'll give a brief introduction to RNNs in the LSTM architecture, and along the way, we'll discuss the motivation for using them in the context of NLP. A recurrent neural network is a class of artificial neural networks that contains a network-like series of nodes, each with a directed or one-way connection to every other node. These nodes can be classified as either input, output, or hidden, where input nodes receive data from outside the network, hidden nodes modify the input data, and output nodes provide the intended results. What makes RNNs so popular and effective for NLP tasks is that they operate sequentially over datasets. For example, a movie review is an arbitrary sequence of letters and characters which the RNN can take as an input. The subsequent hidden and output layers are also capable of working with sequences. In our sentiment analysis example, the movie reviews will have a simple classification output as positive or negative. However, RNNs are capable of generating a sequential output, for example, taking an input sentence in English and outputting a sentence translated into Spanish. This ability to sequentially process data is what makes RNNs so well suited for NLP tasks. Now that we've introduced recurrent neural networks, we can begin discussing a specific RNN architecture called Long Short-Term Memory, or LSTM. In a traditional RNN, during the backpropagation processing phase, the gradient signal can end up being multiplied a large number of times by the weight matrix associated with the connections between the neurons and the network hidden layers. This makes the traditional RNN very sensitive to the weights of the transition matrix and can result in solution instability. These instabilities range from very slow, or stopped learning on one extreme, to diverged learning on the other extreme, both resulting in poor performance. This is the motivation behind the long short-term memory architecture. The LSTM approach introduces a new structure called a memory cell, which we can see here. The memory cell has four primary features, an input gate that can allow or prevent an input signal from changing the state of the memory cell, an output gate that can allow or prevent the memory cell from changing the state of other neurons, a self-recurrent connection which allows the state of the memory cell to remain constant from one time step to another when nothing acts on it, and finally, a forget gate that allows the memory cell to remember or forget its previous state as needed. That wraps up our introduction to recurrent neural networks in the long short-term memory architecture.